In many thanks, Dr. Masi Korir, and that sets our pace for the conversation that we are about to delve deeper into matters diabetes. And joining me to discuss that and elucidate further on that is Dr. Samrat Shah. Dr. Tari, many thanks for making time for us this Thank morning. You so much. I was going through some data and statistics. The World Health Organization estimates that 3.3 percent of Kenyans live with diabetes. Mm. That's in reference to the entire population. Yes, true. To make it worse, it predicts that by 2025 the numbers will rise to 4.5 percent. Why the increment? Why the increase? Yeah, for this, first we need to understand what is diabetes. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's more of lifestyle that is causing the increase in the incidence of diabetes. Mm -hmm. Initial days it was said that diabetes is a disease of developed world. It's more in population who are rich people. But nowadays you can see India being the capital of diabetes worldwide. Mm -hmm. Now the Kenyan population is also increasing. Mm -hmm. There are two reasons for this. One is lack of awareness about diabetes. The may, most importantly, the prevention of diabetes. Mm -hmm. The second most important thing is the lifestyle. Uh, the lifestyle here is more sedentary. Mm -hmm. The lack of awareness about exercise, the diet protocols, what mm -hmm. we need to follow. Mm -hmm. Because of these incidences, the diabetes is now trending towards more of developing countries also mm -hmm. compared to that of developed countries. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is being said that it is predicted that the incidence may rise to 4.5%. Mm -hmm. Before yes. we get deeper into the conversation, I'm seeking your clarification on two terms that I yes. met, uh, yes. which is pre-diabetes yes. and borderline diabetes. Yes. What are those terms? Yeah. See, pre-diabetes is something where you are prone to have diabetes. Okay, mm -hmm. like we do the sugar test. Okay, so in that sugar test, if the sugar levels are somewhere, I would say 5.6 in the fasting state mm -hmm. to around uh, 7. If this range is there, we call them as pre diabetic. Mm -hmm. The same way we do a test called HPA1C. Mm -hmm. So, in HPA1C test, if their sugar levels are uh, the HPA1C is between 5.7 to 6.4, mm -hmm. then we call them as pre diabetic. They are the people who are prone to develop diabetes, mm -hmm. and it is still preventable from them to landing up with diabetes. And what increases the chances of individuals being prone to diabetes? Yeah, the most important thing, as I said, is obesity, mm -hmm. the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are your, the main important concept for diabetes is lifestyle. If you are pre-diabetic and you change your lifestyle, there are very less chances that you may go land up with diabetes. What of borderline diabetes? So borderline diabetes is the same thing, wherein we call them at pre-diabetic. Borderline diabetes comes with the similar terms, wherein you are pre-diabetic or landing up with diabetes, mm -hmm. which is still reversible back. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and what are some of the things that can be done if someone sees themselves being near to the edge of being pre-diabetes? What can you do to reverse such a, such yeah. a situation? Yeah, so once you are known to have pre-diabetes, Mm -hmm. the first thing you have to do is change in lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the things you need to change in a lifestyle? First thing is diet. You need to reduce all the carbohydrate diets in your meals. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you need to regularize your exercise. Mm -hmm. In the terms of exercise, it is being said that 30 minutes of exercise a day, mm -hmm. which is moderate exercise in the form of brisk walking, mm -hmm. running, cycling, jogging, skipping. These are the basic things if you can do for half an hour mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. Along with that, follow a diet protocol mm -hmm. very strictly. Mm -hmm. Then you are not going to land up a diet. And what is the science behind the effectiveness of these ways? Yes. See, what happens, uh, so to understand this, we need to know that the glucose is a basic concept, okay? Every cell in the body requires glucose for their functioning, all right? And diabetes is a disease when the insulin is not able to push this glucose to the cells. Mm -hmm. The normal job of insulin is to take the glucose and push it to the cells so that they carry out their functions. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have a sedentary lifestyle or when you're not exercising yourself, when you don't load up your, when you load too much carbohydrates in your diet, then the insulin is not able to push this glucose inside the cells. Mm -hmm. To normal, to maintain the normal functioning of your insulin, mm -hmm. to push the glucose inside the cells, mm -hmm. you need to have an active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. you need, if you go for walking, running, cycling, these kind of exercises, mm -hmm. the muscle uptake for glucose increases. We'll come to the diet and the exercise yes. a little bit later. Yeah. Is it scientifically true that obesity nears more of diabetes? Yes, it is scientifically proven that the more obesity you are, you are more prone for diabetes. Mm -hmm. You won't believe BMI of more than even 25, mm -hmm. they are told to screen for diabetes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how many types of diabetes are there? I know we, we largely talk of type 2 and type 1, yes. but how many types of diabetes See, are there? Actually, we divide diabetes into four categories. Four categories. Yes. Mm -hmm. One is type 1 diabetes, mm -hmm. one is type 2 diabetes, one is gestational diabetes, which is associated with pregnancy, mm -hmm. one is other types of 
diabetes which are because of drugs or some genetic diseases mm -hmm. or some other diseases causing diabetes. Mm -hmm. So we broadly classify them into four types. Mm -hmm. But the more important for us are type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And why are they more important? Is it because they are m happening more, they are more yes. likely? Yes, the incidence of type 2 and type 1 diabetes is more compared to gestational and type 4 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And what often is the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Yeah. So as I told you, the basic function of cell is to take the glucose and work. Mm -hmm. And pushing this glucose into the cells is done by insulin. So type 1 diabetes is a disease wherein the insulin levels are low in the body. Mm -hmm. Type 2 diabetes is a condition where insulin is there, mm -hmm. but it is not able to function. Mm -hmm. It is not able to push the glucose inside the cells. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between the type 1 and type 2. What are the difference in terms of treatment or is there? Yeah, so treatment difference would be if it is type 1, there is no insulin in the body. Mm -hmm. So you have to give only insulin. Mm -hmm. No tablets will help in type 1. Mm -hmm. If it is type 2, you can give some tablets which can help to push the cell uh, glucose inside the cells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can use insulin as well as medical tablets for type 2, whereas insulin is the only treatment for type 1. And is it a lifelong condition? Or yes. it's, it's something that can be cured? Yes, it's a, it's a lifelong condition as of today. Mm -hmm. But there are some research going on on stem cell transplant. There are research going on on pancreatic transplants, mm -hmm. which are still in studies. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, they will come soon when we will be able to cure diabetes. You make mention of it being a lifelong, of course, occurrence yes. and happening. Yes. Uh, the earlier report by one of my, uh, my colleagues here, yes. Dr. Masi Kori, yes. talked of the cost of diabetes. Yes. As a physician, what is the cost of the treatment? See, cost of treatment of diabetes depends upon what stage the diabetes is. Mm -hmm. See, if the patient requires only simple oral tablets, it can even be controlled with 5,000 shillings a month. A month? Yes. Mm -hmm. If the patient Which, requires... Which, to be fair, is, is not a small amount of yeah, money. Yeah, it's, it's a big amount, even that. Mm -hmm. But if it is uh, something which is very severe type of diabetes where he needs insulin, mm -hmm. the cost may go to 10,000 also. Mm -hmm. So it depends upon what stage he is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what does the package of treating... Uh, diabetes include? What does it entail? Yeah, the diabetes package includes there are a set of investigations which you need to do, mm -hmm. okay, which are there are a set of investigations which you need to repeat every three months, there are a set of investigations which goes for every six months. Mm -hmm. So it's a one one year package which mm -hmm. includes medicines, consultations, as well as your laboratory tests. And does this include anyone who is as well not sure whether they have it or not? No, a, a diabetes screening package is completely different mm -hmm. and the protocol for diabetes screening is completely different. Mm -hmm. Not everyone needs to be screened for diabetes. Not everyone that Not needs? Not everyone needs. There but are certain group of people who need to screen. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you know if you have diabetes? Does it often show some symptoms and signs? Yeah, see, diabetes can come with some symptoms, mm -hmm. but it's not very common that everyone will have these symptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the most common symptoms for diabetes are uh, increased frequency of urination, mm -hmm. increased feeling of thirst, mm -hmm. some people have blurring of vision, mm -hmm. increased intake of food. Mm -hmm. These are the common symptoms, but not everyone has these symptoms. And when we talk of the common symptoms, yes. are they shared both between the type 1 and the type yes, 2? Yes, both of them, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. So in terms of sim symptoms, there's no difference? In terms of symptoms, no. Mm -hmm. But usually type 1 diabetes is recognized at a late stage mm -hmm. when they land up with complications, mm -hmm. yes. When it ends up with compli complications, such as sometimes they come with the directly diabetic ketoacidosis. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a condition wherein uh, the acid levels in the body is very high, mm -hmm. so they directly land up with that symptoms. Mm -hmm. But type two diabetes is fairly uh, well controlled, and type two diabetes usually does not cause very severe complications at an early stage. Mm -hmm. And what can be done to prevent diabetes from an individual? If, if you are health conscious, for instance, yes. What can you do to make sure it doesn't get? Yeah. To you. Uh, the first thing is screening. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you need to screen diabetes first. Okay, and, uh, like everyone who is more than 45 has to be definitely screened for diabetes, mm -hmm. and it is recommended to test once a year. Mm -hmm. That is first thing. Mm -hmm. Second thing. If you are obese, if you have first degree relatives in the family who are diabetic, you should screen. Mm -hmm. If there is someone who is having hypertension, he should screen. Mm -hmm. He is obese, he is having cholesterol, he should screen. Mm -hmm. Once you know that uh, you have all these criteria, mm -hmm. it's good to go for a diet and exercise protocol to mm -hmm. prevent diabetes. You, you talked of two other types of diabetes, generally yes. being four. Yes. We have existed on type 1 and 2. Yes. What are the other types of diabetes? The other type of diabetes is one is gestational diabetes, mm -hmm. which is usually associated with pregnancies. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And what causes that? It happens during pregnancy? Yes, it's during pregnancy, usually screened between 20 to 24 weeks of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And the other type of diabetes is, which is genetic. Mm -hmm. There are many causes for the other types of diabetes, mm -hmm. like there are some medicines, there are genetic causes, there are many other diseases which can come with diabetes. And in contrast with the two, the earlier two we talked of and the earlier, the late two that you mentioned, yeah. uh, is the treatment as well different or it is the same? See, treatment criteria are different, mm -hmm. but they are stringent criteria. In the sense, the medicines remains the same, mm -hmm. but the criteria has differ mm -hmm. on control of diabetes on treatment protocols the entire protocol is different for all of them mm -hmm. yes let's talk of the testing of diabetes yes. what is involved is it something that can be done by an indi individual in their house Yes, mm -hmm. diabetes can be tested even at house, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, we have a glucometer mm -hmm. which can be used and tested at home also. The ideal test for diabetes screening is fasting blood sugar mm -hmm. and HbA1c test. Mm -hmm. HbA1c you cannot do at home, it has to be done in the laboratory. And what does that test include, the, the one you just mentioned that needs to be done in the hospital? Yeah, it's a HbA1c test uh, which gives an average of last three months sugar, mm -hmm. okay. So that is the confirmatory test for diabetes, mm -hmm. if the values are more than 6.5 we can the most diabetes. Mm -hmm. More than just being overweight and diabetes uh, or obesity that you talked of, yes. are there any other signs that may be warning towards the possibility of one being diabetic? Yeah, so that's what I told you. Mm -hmm. uh, to screen for diabetes, you should first look for BMI, as you said, obesity. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if there is first degree relative in your family who is diabetic, mm -hmm. you should be more worried. Mm -hmm. If you're having pressure, you should be more worried. Mm -hmm. If you're having cholesterol, you should be more worried. Mm -hmm. I understand you have a kit with you and we need yes. to do a, a test, yeah. which I voluntarily yes. as well want to do at a test. Yeah. Uh, show us how it operates yeah. first of all. So this is a simple glucometer kit, mm -hmm. all right? So this is the glucometer machine. And this is all you need to test? Yeah, that's all, that's all. It's a very simple test, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So I would say this is the strip mm -hmm. which I have to place uh, to check the sugar, mm -hmm. all right? So you just have to place it like this, mm -hmm. all right? You keep it like this mm -hmm. and the machine gets on, mm -hmm. all right? So now... Okay. So this is the simple needle. So you largely test it from the blood or the yes, other? Yes, from the blood. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So I would say I'll give you a small prick. Okay, there's no problem. Uh, I hope, yeah, all right. Uh -huh. So you get a small amount of blood. You just put it on the strip. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And it gives you reading in five seconds. In five seconds? Yes. So what are the hazards? When do you say this person yeah, is... So it's 5.1 or, or not yeah so uh, the when you see this report mm -hmm. now when you check the sugar in a fasting state mm -hmm. and if the sugars are more than seven mm -hmm. like now yours is 5.1 you're not diabetic mm -hmm. so if it is more than seven i would say that he is diabetic mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. so let me give you more a than answer. seven what is yes. often the average thank you. you can take this yes okay uh, le let me hold it for my cameraman so that he gets yes. a clear shot of my sugar status, for, yes. for the lack of a better word, this morning. Uh, what are the hazards? When do you get to know that someone is edging towards a certain uh, uh, red line, if, if at all it exists? Yes. And uh, what is the red line as far as so the testing is concerned? Yes. When you test this, mm -hmm. if your sugars in the fasting state are more than 5.6, mm -hmm. and uh, from 5.6 to 7, mm -hmm. Okay, this is the time when it is red line, or we call pre-diabetes, you should be more cautious about in the fasting state. If you are checking That's after 5.6 to 7. seven yes, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Seven or more than seven, we consider it as diabetes in fasting state. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you are checking sugar two hours after your breakfast or two hours after the meal, mm -hmm. okay, then I would say that if your sugar is between 7.8 to 11, mm -hmm. I would consider you as diabetic. Mm -hmm. so you are pre-diabetic, mm -hmm. and sugar of more than 11 is diabetes. Uh, the test we just did was yes. very fast. I want how yes. accurate the test itself is? No, the test accuracy is usually good. It uh -huh. gives an accuracy of around 98 to 99 percent. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's not a problem at all. Uh -huh. In fact, the World Health Organization recommends to go for self-monitoring of blood glucose. Uh -huh. For those patients who are diabetic, uh -huh. it's very much recommended to go for SMBG. And how frequent is the, is the, is the test? Yeah. So once you're diagnosed with diabetes, uh -huh. the ideal recommendation is you should check your fasting sugar. You should check your sugar two hours after the breakfast. The same way pre-lunch, two hours post-lunch, mm -hmm. pre-dinner, two hours post-dinner. Mm -hmm. But from my side, when I practice in Medihill, what I do is I tell the patients to check sugar at least once in a day. Mm -hmm. So you get me an average sugar of one month, mm -hmm. like today you check the fasting sugar, tomorrow you check two hours after breakfast, day after tomorrow you check fasting before lunch. Mm -hmm. So in that way you just check and give me an average sugar of all the month. And what often is the recommended or even scientifically past average? About what? 
uh, in, in terms of the testing. If I test three times today, yeah. three times tomorrow, yes. the average that is not from off a red line is? Yeah, so once you are diabetic, uh, then the sugars are recommended to keep less than 7.3 for fasting. Mm -hmm. And when you are checking it post-lunch, two hours post-lunch, it should be somewhere less than 10. Somewhere less than 10? Less than 10. But do you expect it to be above 7. Point no, two hours after uh, dinner, mm -hmm. it's okay to be less than 10. Mm -hmm. But in a fasting state, it should be less than 7. And, and how do the foods that we eat, the fruits and all that we consume, yes. affect our sugar levels? Yes. Uh, see, carbohydrate diets, mm -hmm. they specifically affect your sugars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, there are insulin pumps which are there in market now. Mm -hmm. But when you are taking tablets, you mm -hmm. need to fix your diet. You cannot change your diet every day. Mm -hmm. So if you change your diet, the sugar levels will start fluctuating. Uh, Dr. Samrat, I love you to hold at that point. We'll come to the discussion a little bit later. But first, Deputy President William Ruto is currently taking part at...